Right guys and girls, Mark Crossfield here and I've got two very different irons in my hand. I've got a Callaway Maverick Max, so big chunky, and I've got the Mizuno MP20 Blade. And I want to just try and address some comments that come through in kind of all my life of doing online content around the ideas of different people testing. So obviously I hit shots and then there's this kind of perception that because I'm a professional, I hit out the middle all the time. So it doesn't relate to what you're doing as someone as an amateur golfer with a handicap, which I understand and there's merit to. And we'll talk about what that means as we go through. I did a test recently. If you haven't checked the video out, go and check it out where I hit like a 30 year old iron against a modern iron just to compare how those irons react to their mean. So what I mean as in how each iron reacts to the distance it goes, which one's more accurate, if you like hitting its distance more often, which got a great response and thanks for all the comments. But it also got this comment in it as well that I've had in all my videos, it's an interesting one, about the, the comment says, get a amateur to test those, to get a higher handicapper to test those two irons or those two drivers, whatever we're talking about, when we're talking about kind of game improvement and help, then you'll see a difference. And I want to explore that in today's video because I think a lot of you are still being very sold on data and the mess in the data rather than actually any gains or not. Let's show you what I mean. So let me introduce you to my 20 handicapper tester. Hello. My name's Mark Crossfield and I'm a 20 handicapper and I'm going to test these two irons for you. Post in the comments down below, 20 handicapper hitting, big chunky to blade. We couldn't get more extreme in the design makeup of these two clubs in the iron range. Which one's going to come out as the easier, the better one for me as a 20 handicapper? Let me show you my 20 handicap swing. So you can start by collecting some data with the Callaway iron. And as I think lots of you probably have already noticed, yes. I'm hitting these left-handed. So left-handed, I am around, well, with the amount of practice, I would say a 20 handicapper. Oh, nice hit, 20 handicapper mark. A Little bit leaky out to the left, but hit that decent. So I've actually collect collected data over a couple of days with these clubs to show you, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Not a bad hit, a little bit out of the bottom. And you'll see that when I'm hitting this way around, we definitely see a massive variation in my strike pattern. And when I look down at this Callaway Maverick, the same as when I'm Mark Crossfield, the pro tester. Yeah, I like the look of this. I like the fact that it's big. It does inspire some help. Oh, ho, 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 Duffy Duffy. Little Duffy pull. Whereas when I look at the Mizuno blade here down by the ball, yeah, like this is harder this way. And I look down at this club and I think, there's not as much there. Is this going to be as helpful? Oh, ha, ha. ouch. So these things, when I'm stood in a position where golf is so much harder, yeah, like they inspire the idea of confidence over, obviously this isn't aimed at a 20 handicapper who struggles to hit the ball anywhere. I get like, that's the idea, isn't it? And again, we'll show you the data to see how different they are or not, but I mean, this stuff definitely plays into my mind as something I look at and think I want. But then there's another thing that I notice when I look down. And that's the fact that this ball shoots up in the air with this seven iron and I look down and I see loft. I see a good amount of face staring back at me. And I know with my golf knowledge that loft is only going to help me keep the ball from going offline more, deplane ideas with loft. It's just going to be harder for me to curve the ball offline the more you give me loft. So the fact that I look down at this and I see plenty of loft there, where I don't see any help in this idea, it all being thin and it's going to vibrate and hurt when I hit it, those kind of things. The loft that gives me some confidence back. And if I think about the situations out on the course, as I've said before in these kind of tests, it's where launch gets compromised. Oh yes. Oh, goodbye. That is not straight at all. So in my set of irons, I go to a six iron that's uber, uber chunky, like a hybrid basically. And then from six iron upwards, I'm into hybrids. And that's because again, it relates more rather than the chunkiness of it, it's the idea of it popping up in the air. It's the launch that I'm playing into because as soon as my launch comes down, as soon as I hit the ball and I haven't got enough speed to sustain the launch that I create, then I start losing distance, which is why accuracy a little bit because other situations that happen on the golf courses, 
when you get in semi-rough and ideas of rough, those kind of places, when you get in situations on the golf course and so not this dry, flat formula in here, launch just comes down, it very rarely goes up. It's generally being knocked away from you. So I'm using clubs where when we get to lower lofts, I'm trying to just keep a one degree extra bit of launch on there to make sure I get my flights out there. So the loft on this definitely plays into that idea as well, where this doesn't, which almost makes me feel like these balance out a little bit. So I'll carry on collecting a bit more data, which we'll show you in a second. Why don't we look at the tech and ideas of loft and what have you around these two, I these two irons, because Definitely, and this isn't a dig at either of these two irons, you're gonna have very different ideas. Oh, ho, ho. how do we play golf like this? This is challenging, isn't it? You know, there's gonna be a lot more shouting of help, user-friendly from one of these clubs over the other. And like I say, that's not a brand thing. I could have used the Callaway blade and the Mizuno cavity backs. They all make their versions of these clubs. <laughs> Fat ball. So the Maverick Max has a flash cup face technology for fast ball speeds across the face. Uh, artificial intelligence in this eye, we've created a sophisticated face architecture that's unique to every loft. Tungsten energy core for optimal launch, custom tungsten infused weights in each eye and allows to locate the position of the CG in each eye for extraordinary precision while maintaining ball speeds in the flash cup face. Urethane microfears for unprecedented feel. So the Callaway Maverick is definitely talking ball speeds, there's artificial intelligence, you know, there's tech and money really going into trying to keep this to help you keep your ball speeds up across the face. It's, it's trying to do as much as it can to help you. What about the Mizuno? So the Mizuno layers of field grain flow, forged HD, Hiroshima Japan, pure 1025E selected mild carbon steel. It's feel ideas, tour ready profile. You know, it's, it's meant to look what tour players want it to look like. Refined top line, finished top line in recent generations. Vertical stability, a discreetly tapered top line and cambered sole allows for fuller vertical spread of weight, forgiveness strike. So they start mentioning it there and then you've got mixed finishes. So we definitely start talking this one around precision, feels, looks, ideas of trying to be, well, as friendly as it can be, but in this bracket, maybe. It, it, it's very different language between the two. So how much, and you can post in the comments down below maybe, how much am I bringing my baggage, or you as a golfer bringing your baggage of the looks and feels? Oh, ain't that nice? Oh, a little draw as well. Get on. Oh, big shot. To the test. And then also how much are pros just simply relying? And this is something I found through all the years, which is why I love doing what I do and always why, one of the main reasons I started testing equipment, are pros just relying on the advertising? Oh, yes, please. Goodbye. Ideas that is presented to them when they come to purchase these clubs to then sell on to you and not testing themselves. And that's one thing I've noticed over the years, how willing your average PGA pro is possibly just to say, you know, when a company says this is what happens for them then to recite it back to customers, stroke in turn, to other pros is what is happening. Oh, little fat balls. Where for me, I always think, well, is that really happening? Like, is that actually what is going on? Or are you just telling me that because you want me to go and pre-order loads of these sets and then try and sell them on to my members? So we've got a fun game at the end as always, which we'll come to in a second. Let's look at the data of how different or similar these two very different irons actually are. So let's kick off with left and right accuracy. And just a little point here, when I was sent this data from my stats guy, I had to phone him up. I, like, I phoned him up, so I had to chat about it. Like, is this really what I sent you? Is this really the data that was went through? Like, we were literally giggling about what happened. So look at left and right. So the Mizuno definitely is much tighter than the Maverick. Again, I could hit loads more shots and that might change. You can see the standard deviations of both are overlapping and the means are very similar. Obviously, they're always a bit to the left. So I'm push cutting it as a left-hander. So I would need to aim up the right to manage these on the course, which we might do as we get to the game, but certainly more variation in the Maverick over the Mizuno. And that's something I find a little bit in the right-handed version of this test as well. You get maybe slight, uh, tighter dispersion, short, long, and a fraction left to right, possibly sometimes. But again, most of that really is noise if you look at those two. 
So here's the left and right and short and long accuracy and really there's not much to tell in there. I mean, it's just a lot of mess and it's basically short left is where I'm missing that, which is what I would expect. But I'm not seeing one really doing much better than another there. If anything, again, you can see the Mizuno is a fraction tighter, but it's a fraction. The, the ones that are outlying are in the rubbish, like they're proper bad shots. Strikes. So I've hit one button, literally zero, zero in the middle there with the Callaway, which is hilarious. Look at that one. That's a zero, zero strike. You don't see many of those very often. So on the two axis, it's measuring that club. It's literally slap bang in the middle. Then everything else very much towards the toe, high toes, few low toes. I mean, just everywhere. I mean, I'm doing what amateurs do, which is which is literally scattergun the face. And then look at this. This is where we start to really giggle. Average distance with both of these clubs is 120 yards. Now the loft of these two clubs is not the same. It's not the same. So the fact that they're ending up going the same difference, uh, distance is back to my point earlier of me looking at loft. Looking at loft and getting that ball launching with the speeds I'm putting in. If you go beyond that, I'm actually starting to fall out of the air. Remember, this is a seven iron. Ask yourselves, how many of you are stopping at a seven iron or an eight iron and then going to hybrids? Not enough of you. My set stops at a seven iron, and then I go to a six iron, which is basically a hybrid. And I've got more speed than the average golfer. So I think there's so much you can learn for your golf bags in these kind of tests. But again, same distance, very similar standard deviations, short and long. I mean, for all the shouting and all the words, it's funny, isn't it? And then ball speeds again, literally matching. You could argue the Callaway is a fraction faster on the mean, but again, it would just be noise. They're just the same. And then peak heights, again, statistically, they would be argued as the same. If I could repeat that pattern over and over and over and over again on many occasions, what you would find is that the if the Mizuno did launch that bit high or did peak height that little bit higher, I might buy into that or I might not, depending on what flight I want to max out distance for roll or land. But really, for all intents and purposes, looking at those two again, there's nothing in it. The other standout thing that I noticed when I did this test is that I had to hit a lot of shots to get pretty much the same results that we see if I do it the right-handed way. If anything, what happens in the right-handed way is I, I see that the, the Callaway would push on longer the right-handed way because the speed is upped. So it's not all I would have to do in this test left-handed. If I did this test with an eight iron, you might find that the Callaway with its stronger loft does now start pushing on further. Not that that's better, remember, it's just because the loft shows through subject to the launch. What I'm not seeing is really much of a difference in the patterns that I see the other way around. The biggest thing I'm noticing is I have to hit a lot of shots. Maybe in the comments down below, post a comment. Let me know how many shots did you hit in your last iron test? Like how many did you hit with each club? And also, did you alternate? Did you hit 10 with one and 10 with another? Try and hit two or three with one, two or three with another, two or three with one, two or three with another. Keep alternating around so you don't get into any patterns. It's such a better way. Because at the end of the day, when you start testing with someone like me left-handed and I'm dotting around the face a lot, what's gonna happen is the noise of the data just increases. And if the noise of the data increases, then basically you just have to hit hundreds to near thousands of shots to then start seeing any meaningful distance, uh, difference. Which again is why your looks and feels, what inspires your confidence, might be actually the bigger premise when you start getting two clubs that are performing. Well, they shouldn't be performing the same, should they? Let's take them to the course, see what happens then. So we're 130 out. I averaged 120 carry on that test. So 130 is about where I would hit these irons because they're gonna land and then roll forward a little bit. Gonna start with the Mizuno. Which one do you reckon is gonna win? Um, we've gone to Pebble Beach. We're on the fifth, I think it is, the fifth hole par three, uh, where my bail out to the left is going to uh, show through. I think what's the most interesting with this whole point is that the idea of the amateur testing is actually showing less than my test. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I actually, where people say, if you test with an amateur, then you'll start to see difference. I beg to differ. What you tend to see is more noise. And if you speak to the stats people, they say the same. All that happens is the, the, the messier the human gets, the more data you need to collect for anything meaningful to be shown. So I actually disagree with that. And I know that sounds like, oh, because that's my reviews are perfect. And you should just, if that's not what I mean. I don't mean it like that. But I do mean that I am able as a tighter dispersion golfer to show the nuances of differences between these irons, the, the effectiveness of the stronger loft. 
and then in turn how it doesn't affect it when you start coming down in speeds, which this test does show, and I've done it loads of times, when I take myself to a five iron from a, a cavity back, big chunky five iron to a bladed five iron, I see those differences. So actually I think, why do you think people say that? Do it with an amateur test and you'll see the bigger difference. To me, again, it sounds like they're desperately trying to justify the noise of the manufacturers that's coming out and then in turn their purchases, rather than looking at it maybe without the golf emotions. What do you reckon? Let me know. Because I'm definitely keen on including more data and we've got, I've got a plan which unfortunately with COVID restrictions and what have you is very hard to do at the minute where I do include amateur data. But what I will do is it needs to be lots of amateur data for it to mean anything. One amateur testing is just gonna show, subject to their stripe patterns, a lot of noise. Right, can I? Mizuno. Oh, that's left. It's the same, oh, get on the path. Uh, that's a no. So that's poor face delivery. Strike was like average to fine. So Callaway now has the advantage because I'm gonna just make sure I try and improve, like use my swing fault as well. And this is something else when you're testing which will just add mess to the data. To try and hang on to it a bit more, look, which I have. And that's literally gonna work. It's gonna run through because it's thin. So it was a low bit of a thin bullet. So if we look at these two, the last one, the Callaway, <laughs> eight mile hour more ball speed, 14 to 10 degree different in the launch, uh, massive difference in the spin, peak heights, look at the difference, and then turn, look at the difference here. Like which shot are you using there? Do you see what I mean? Both of those are arguably noise, aren't they? Both of those are arguably quite noisy. But we've got 17 yards to 31 yards to the pin, Callaway one up. Right, Callaway with the honor. Oh, fin oh yes, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh God, yes please, come on cut face, where are you? Right, Mizuno now, in theory, has the advantage, second shot. Yeah, there we go, just carry on that line, carry, go in. Oh, we got Kariri, what a shot. 20 handicapper, no way coming down. So eight foot to 35 yards, considerably less ball speed with the, again, it's the strike, you know, it was a thin bullet again against the toey, not so thin bullet. Launch angle six to 21, look at the spin difference. Look at the carry difference, one all. Right, last shot with each club, who do you reckon's gonna win? But it's interesting, isn't it? Look at those four shots, they're kind of showing nothing. What the biggest thing again is me, I'm shining through. The, my lack of ability is shining through. The idea of, Amateur testing would show more is, I just, I don't agree. It, it shows considerably less. Or what it does is it shows the same because the same patterns show through to my game. It's just that you've got to reach different lofts to see the drop off because there's different speeds. But those rules are in stone. They're just, they're just physics. Like you can just do maths and work out those. They're, 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 not, they're, not, they're not questionable. They're not messy. They are black and white, the ideas of launch and spin that you need to hit to maximise. I've got charts produced by very clever people, not produced by me, that I can just put you in a window subject to your angle of attack and your speeds. So I, I just, it's that search that people want. I don't, the, search is, it's, the search is here. This is where you've got to start searching people's. Right, here we go, Mizuno to start. So really, at the end of the day for me, looking at these two clubs, yes, the Callaway makes me feel like I can, I've got more of a chance. It looks more friendly, but then I would question the lofts, which would be obviously, again, the same message that I say so often, which would be blending the iron set to suit me. And then apart from that, whoa, I am not seeing a difference. And we are at pretty extreme ends of the spectrum here with the irons. Oh, it's another decent one. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Sit down and get green goes this way. Come on, come that way. Ha oh, ha, yes please. Right, Callaway, can you compete? And then let's just listen to my tone. I mean, what's so interesting when I hit left-handed, and I've done this before, is the fun, like of me trying to be better, far outweighs what is going on down there. And I think with men playing golf and these forums and, even some channels and YouTube stuff, which where people talk so overly, what's the word? Kind of 
just a bit too geeky about these. And obviously I can geek out, I get that, but, and I think it actually sells it even more when people are like, oh, that's got the cup face, you know, and the cup face is in it. Where is this? And it does this. You, what do you do? How messy are you? And as a golf coach, as I think, just don't let these messages take away from the main message, which is you at the end of the day. The more it does, the harder it will be for you to get better and the more you'll just spend your money. You know these people, they go around in circles just buying different clubs. So this club, this club, that club, this club. Their handicaps don't move, which a onlooker looking on, a neutral will just look at that and giggle. Like, what are they doing? They're just like, they're not improving because surely the handicap is the rate of that. Right, Callaway, 24 foot, I think that is to be. Game improvement, oh no. Well, that's a decent hit, it's just the face is in the wrong angle. It's just it at the wrong angle. So again, ball speed's a little bit different, a bit quicker with the Callaway at the end there. Launch is very different because the face angle was just insane. We got too close face to six, seven, it's eight degrees difference between those. Standard deviation of four in the face delivery. And this is something I see so common. Like you've got to start trying to understand your standard deviations. The more you understand your standard deviations, the more you'll stop searching here and just get this to work and you'll start searching here because you could see the standard deviations between those two clubs were not that crazily massive, but my standard deviations of deliveries are huge. So again, the point is, amateur testing is not, I'm not like, having a go, like it's fine, you can do it, and you can ask what an amateur feels and what the rest of it. But I would argue where people think it shows more in certain situations, I'm actually gonna go out there and say, I think it shows less, unless you're hitting enough shots. Put some in the comments down below, what does that mean to you? What do you think? And which one won out of that? I wouldn't see a winner there. It's again, it's gonna play into my personal preference. Sometimes I see on videos, people say, oh, he's chosen that one and because he, he likes that one more. And I just think, I didn't actually choose any. I wouldn't, like, I very rarely does one beat another. Like, what, 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 is, what are you watching? Um, yeah, they're very different irons. Were you surprised that those numbers were so, so similar? Let me know, hope that makes sense.